Have you ever wondered why, in Fahrenheit, the freezing point is 32 degrees, instead of a nice round number, or better yet, zero? If you saw our other video on the history of temperature scales, you know that Fahrenheit was created by German physicist and instrument maker Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit in 1724. Fahrenheit originally set the high end of his scale, so 96 is the average body temperature. This actually makes sense, since this scale represented our body's perception of temperature, which is an idea that even Isaac Newton supported back in 1701. This makes Fahrenheit's 0 to 100 range reflect what we humans consider cold or hot, not what water does. But why is the low end set so that 32 is freezing? To answer that, let's first look at what 0 means in Fahrenheit. And if you think it'll be something obvious, well, it's not. A common theory is that zero was the lowest recorded temperature of Danzig, Poland, Fahrenheit's hometown. The story goes that Fahrenheit hated writing negative numbers, so he mapped a zero on his scale to the coldest temperature he knew so he never has to write negative temperatures. Although this story is often mentioned, it's likely folklore. Why? We know from letters he wrote to his Dutch colleague Hermann Borheve that Fahrenheit didn't create his scale from thin air. He built his scale on top of a similar one developed by Danish astronomer Ole Romer. The Romer scale pegged zero to the freezing point of a brine mixture consisting of water, ice, and ammonium chloride, which is a type of salt. This was done for a practical reason. In the early 1700s, this eutectic mixture freezes at a stable, consistent temperature and was easily reproducible. The pure water needed to calibrate consistent freezing point was actually more difficult to produce. But why did Fahrenheit pick such arbitrary numbers for freezing point and body temperature? When Fahrenheit started, he took Romer's scale and multiplied it by a factor of 4 to get rid of the fractions. Originally, this resulted in water's freezing point of 30 and the human body temperature of 90. Fahrenheit then adjusted the freezing point and body temperature to 32 and 96, so the two numbers are separated by 64. This was very intentionally done, because 64 is the sixth power of 2, which made it easy for him to mark up his instruments by bisecting that range six times. This is why his first thermometer was inscribed with values separated by 8, instead of a more easily divisible 10. So, the Fahrenheit scale started with a rational goal of creating a temperature scale that measures the human experience, which also made Fahrenheit more usable for fine-grained reading within the temperature range that we actually live in, when compared to Celsius. After all, setting my thermostat to 72 degrees Fahrenheit feels more fine-tuned than trying to set, say, 22.2 degrees Celsius. But key markers on the Fahrenheit scale evolve into a rather arbitrary set of values due to technological limitations of the time and, frankly, ease of manufacturing. And all this made the scale more difficult to use in scientific contexts. Quick, what's the boiling point of water in Fahrenheit? I bet even you Fahrenheit users out there don't know the answer. It's 212, by the way. So the next time a Celsius user tells you how their scale is superior, you can tell them the backstory of Fahrenheit and, uh, yeah, that they might have a point. If you want to practice doing temperature conversion in your head, you can do so with our free app at FireMind.com. FireMind is a set of digital flashcards that helps you train your brain to do this and other everyday math fast. It tracks your progress, provides timely tips, and lets you compare how you are doing versus other learners. Try FireMind for free today. And thanks for watching.